getting started video. Normally I'm in, I'm in my bed, just on the edge of the bed, uh, getting ready to go out and well, I'm gonna get up and uh, start the day. Well, and I said we do the we do the uh, sort of the uh, around the office check first, come back to bed, get ready, and then uh, uh, begin the day. Did that. And one of the checks I did was to check outside to see whether or not there was an open window uh, 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 to go uh, food shopping. To, you know, to, do, to get the rest of the stuff that wouldn't fit in the bag. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do today. The window looks pretty good. So it was a, there was an ice storm yesterday. That was because I was supposed to do it yesterday, but I didn't end up doing it yesterday. No, it's because of the ice storm. I'm going to go put my boots on now. Okay. So, today, presents, it's still wet outside, but I've got enough boots and stuff. I've got my boots and everything, so it should be sufficient. Uh, it's not raining, so I should be good to go. And that's what I'm doing. I'm <laughs> getting ready to go. One of the things I said I put off until today too, until this particular video, is um, talking about physiology. And physiology fundamentally is uh, how the body works. Psychology is uh, specifically, or more particularly, for the mind. Let me adjust the camera here. The tripod isn't behaving well. Here we go. Here we go, that's better. So, physiology is the study of the human body and how things function. It's, in many ways, it, once, if you look at simply the physiology, you're simply looking at the physical mechanics. Sewer muscles, stuff like that. Uh, muscle groupings. But when you add organic chemistry to it, now you're getting into medicine. You're actually very far into medicine because you're looking at, see, medicine comes off of, uh, of biochemistry, and biochemistry is really organic chemistry, but it's specifically looking at the chemistry within life. And ironically enough, all of organic chemistry um, covers that entire area. And this is why, if, you know, we may all think fossil fuels and organic chemistry. Yeah, that's true, correct. But, uh, <clears throat> forgot my umbrella. But, the issue at hand here is that uh, fossil fuels, your coal and oil, which makes up, makes, up, makes up most of the petrochemical industry or and organic chemistry itself, uh, were once alive. So yes, ironically enough, petrochemicals are indeed organic because they were produced by life. So, when we talk about physiology, and particularly we talk about how our diets work, or don't work, we need to start looking into more of the specifics of things. And 
when I get back and we have and we begin our nice discussion on physiology for the next uh, I don't know say a week or so um we'll talk more about it, including diets you know oh yeah I'm on a diet well what does that mean and what does it mean in terms of chemistry what does it mean in terms of of physiology so when I come back uh, we'll talk more I'm back <laughs> Yeah, I didn't get far. I got to the sidewalk, and a large chunk of the street and the sidewalk are covered in ice. <laughs> and although I have the boots to do that, to, to walk on those things, to, on there, I don't want to risk walking uh, with the heavy backpack. So, the decision um, is and was uh, to scrap, to postpone today, to put off the, uh, the shopping, and try again on, um, on Saturday. That way uh, I can add uh, some new, uh, uh, some, um, I, what I can do, and this is why I was thinking Saturday would be the better day to do it, is uh, I'll be able to add some uh, some of my regular shopping in. And that way, when I do the regular shopping, I won't have to carry as much. And you know, it'll you know, kill two birds with one stone type of thing. Or more appropriately, distributing the, uh, the load of what I carry over two days rather than the one day. And this is kind of the dilemma, you know. If you're only going one day a week, yeah, you have you have to do the heavy load. But if you have something extra to carry, in other words, you have to do an extra day, then spreading the day out, the sort of the time when you when you go out, allows you to adjust your load, to balance the load, so you're not carrying as much at once as you would be if you only had to go once. And this is in many ways you know on a discussion of physiology how you have to sort of consider it when you you know when you're exercising or you're doing something for nutrition or you know uh, anything along those lines to sort of keep yourself fit so to speak. The word fit is uh, subjective. It really depends on your body that determines whether you're fit or not. Uh, so that's something that needs to be considered. And just, we'll talk about more about diet. We'll talk about uh, uh, as we go through on throughout the day. We'll talk more about diet. We'll talk about uh, oh, oh, other things pertaining to. And so uh, I will see you on the research desk. I'm going to have a bit of something to eat first, so I'll have some breakfast. And then uh, we will get our day started. Because this part of the day, this uh, pr uh, project or thing that, thing that, had been, that had to be done, is now gone. So, <laughs> time to readjust. <clears throat> Uh, it's time for the next segment of the BTS vlog. It is not exactly uh, a little bit later. It's a lot later. It is. Let me give you a time and day stamp. It is three hours and fifty-eight minutes into the day of Friday, March twenty-fifth, uh, two thousand sixteen. Yeah, uh, it's happening again. We'll have to check a tiny little thing on my research desk here. And instead of being short, it's now, let's say I started at around 9 o'clock. 
it's so nine to midnight is three hours, another four hours, so it's seven hours later. And where I started off and where I am now are completely in many ways disconnected, if one would think. But yet there are connections to everything, so <laughs> uh I still have another couple hours to go through. Uh, what I'm I'm watching a lecture right now, uh, and taking my notes. So I'm not gonna try to make any prejudgments. So, but anyway, this is uh, going on to the things I can talk about, or because I don't want to. In this case here, I don't want to prejudge things. So I'm not gonna give a a description until maybe basically maybe later on tomorrow you can check the news and I'll start giving a description on things um oh by the time you see this is the this should the news should be the uh tweet line should be well tweet lines plus it out uh tweet line plus it out <clears throat> tweet line plus should be well on its way uh, I was supposed to do a test shot tonight but uh it looks like that's not gonna happen so, anyways, uh, on to the physiology, because I am tired. The effects that a fatigue has on the body and on the mind uh, is what you observe. With people, some, some of them have been asking, well, why don't you show the research you've been doing? Well, I am showing the research. Me. I'm one of the, the, one of the subjects of the research. So, if you want to talk, talk about my fatigue, well, that's part of the uh, research into physiology. I mean, the, you know, a lot of universities and medical schools are spending billions of dollars uh, uh, sleep, sleep dep on sleep deprivation and what happens during sleep dep deprivation. So it is a topic of medicine. It is a topic of medical science. It is a topic of physiology. Uh, what happens when you become sleep deprived? If you've been working very hard, your mind is very taxed and you start becoming tired. And see what happens as I start as soon as I start talking, what happens? I start yawning, and because there, there's there's something that goes on. There's a physiology of when I start talking, and the air starts moving from my lungs, that it causes a reflex reaction that produces the yawn. So when I'm tired and I start talking, but I hadn't been talking before. I've been sort of watching something, just being quiet. As I start talking, the yawn starts coming up. So this is, and it's not it's something, it's, uh, the yawn is not something you can control. It's not a controllable thing. It's something that's uncontrollable. And here we go again. The yawn is what? A deep breath in, that's the, and then a deep breath out. So this has to do with the function of the lungs. And when you're tired, the ability of the lungs and of the abdomen to really sort of navigate what you have in terms of uh, enough oxygen and not enough oxygen uh, becomes a factor. And so after a certain amount of uh, uh, amount of talking, amount of sort of uh, engaging in a discussion, you start to yawn, particularly when your body is fatigued. And this is certainly the case here, or when you're getting up, your body hasn't fully woken up yet, and you have these sort of uh, yawns that go on. So this is, you can sort of see. You can, and even my speech patterns, it's, I have to be conscious and, and more aware of my speech pattern, because I realize that sometimes when I'm really tired, if you notice with a couple, with a couple of video, videos, I go into this sort of monotone where uh, there's no life in me. The, the energy is simply gone, and I'm just sort of, rambling rambling through what I need to say or what I want to say and this becomes a bit of a problem because you know you, 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 you don't always want to watch someone who's just simply rambling on uh, and so if you want to produce a better video I have to be more lively but in order to be more lively and have a better cadence in the tone of my voice I have to, the concentration level that I would have to put into this is significantly more than if uh, I were well rested. In other words, the fatigue wasn't here. And I think this is, this is seven hours of studying. I still have, I probably am not going to be going to bed anytime before 10 o'clock in the morning. So that means I have another six hours of studying left to do. But this is, this is research. This is what research is, is about. It's, it's, it's about pushing these boundaries, 
finding new things. Uh, the end result of the research, is what, what, what you will see, will be the growth of uh, Cyborg Alpha TV Network. That's going to be the outcome of all this research. This is what you, so you'll see my background discussion, you'll see the fatigue. Some of the stuff you're not going to see because I don't want to give away certain things. There are certain sources that I don't want to reveal. But you will see the end product. So you will see the beginning product. You see sort of the behind the scenes here a little bit. Because uh, I am at my research desk here. Uh, and it, it, you have to have your, your sort of called creature comforts, comforts or whatever they are. My creature, com creature comforts seem to be uh, stuffed animals. They're around it because in order to do the 7 hours or 12 hours to push through my mental barriers, this is what's needed. This, this is what I need to get myself through. Other people are other things, you know, some people, uh, some geeks and nerds, they like Star Wars, or they like uh, Star Trek, or they have, they're uh, in, into Dungeons and Dra Dragons and, and into uh, me medieval times, or, you know, the uh, whole sorcery bit there. Every geek and nerd has their own uh, sort of geekdom and nerdom in terms of, of where they bo belong in the fantasy genre. Uh, and it's basically nerds uh, and geeks are kids forever, even though they're very intelligent, they're kids forever. And these are the things they like to play at. So, <laughs> this is my play stuff. It's around my work. And it's because I'm here studying, uh, like a student, uh, anyone in school, but it's more like homeschooling. Uh, I'm here studying for 12 hours a day. This is my, my job is to study for 12 hours a day, or however long I need to study for, in order to get myself to the next level, to the next bit of understanding. And that's it. The pieces of the puzzle for this puzzle that I am trying to put together, they don't come in a neat little box. They're scattered all over the world. You have no idea where the next piece is going to come from. I didn't know. I, I just saw the title of this do, uh, of this lecture. I sat down and started watching it. You know, didn't think much of anything. Just took my notes with it. And bit by bit, things started popping in. And I think it, it was, uh, it, this was in a list, uh, the one I'm watching now, that's sort of really taking up a lot of time. It was in a list of like 30 different sources. I had a list of 30 sources that I had to go through because I, from this one thing that I was watching on RT, I ended up developing 30 sources for it. And so I was going through these 30, 30 sources, and this was it here. And once I just hit on it, just, well, this is something significant. So I'm paying more attention to my notes because it's something, and it connects to a variety of different things. It connects to the theology, it connects to understanding of religion, it connects to psychology, it connects to how people develop the understanding they develop, how experience plays into a person. Now, I remember we talking about before, uh, I was talking about uh, 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 about the university of life. And people say, oh, I, could get, I deserve a university credit for, a university degree for my experience in life. I said that the, the thing is, is that a person who is really academic, a person who pushes beyond that knowledge, uh, integrates a lot of the reading, the studying he does, and he is the pronoun for human, not uh, for man, and not the uh, gender. Uh, so, this academic, his knowledge and experience his knowledge only extends as far as his reading and experience are put together. In other words, there's an integration of knowledge and experience. So if you take a person who has no knowledge, who hasn't read anything, because each book you read becomes part of your experience, or every lecture you attend becomes part of your experience, then you have nothing to add to your your physical experience. So you just have your f physical experience alone, and there's no academic understanding behind it at all. And this is the problem with the people who say, oh, the University of Life, I deserve a degree. Well, no, because the university degree is about the academic understanding of the experience. And if you've read nothing, you have no academic experience. Academic experience is, academic experience is not sitting in a classroom. Academic experience is what you read. What you if you've done no studying, and you've done no reading, you have no academic experience. And this is the whole situation here. When you know, 
well, you, you know, you didn't go down the standard path. Well, no, because I don't have to go down the standard path for study. I don't have to go necessarily and go in, in, sit in school and sit in a classroom and get a degree or listen to lecture. There's a lot of the stuff that's available on the internet. And research is the same way here. But I think at the same time, this is not the university of life because I, I've, I've done an enormous amount of reading. I've done an enormous amount of studying. And in fact, in order to understand where I am and how I got here, you have to understand the difference between subjective and objective philosophy. Subjective philosophy is the uh, the authorized knowledge that somebody gives you. That's the school system. The well, school system from the university on down to uh, elementary schools are authorized knowledge, or standard knowledge, the things you're supposed to know. Objective, uh, objective philosophy, objective understanding, objective uh, uh, philosophy is something that stands outside the mind. It's not authorized. And so this means you have to go beyond a textbook. You have to go beyond the standard knowledge. And you can't do that within a system that expects you to be within the standard system. At some point in time, you have to take that risk, and I took that risk in my second year. I decided to take the risk and stand outside of a regular university and see what was there. And it is, because you don't know what's there, it's out. It's, it's it's an exploration. And this is what let me. Uh, I was already going down the path of physics. I already had in mind. I want. Okay. I want to see what's outside. For I want to see what's outside. So I was taking the the actual physics program. I was at U of T. Second year of university came around. And I said, Well, if they're always talking about objective science, if they're talking about the the objective philosophy of physics, physics really does offer something new, something different. So let me now. I've gone as far as I think I can go with, with the with the university. Uh, I was a bit disillusioned with what was going on. So I said, okay, let me see if I can stand outside of the university and let me see what I can find about physics from that perspective. And this is what led me into uh, setting up my uh, my research institute uh, called Delta R&D Inc., which was the vehicle that would take me into where I am now uh, but it was done on the uh, done on the basis of the quantum physics idea of the random walk, where I would not take a specific path. I would allow the research itself, which was random, to take me into the direction, the next direction I'd be going in. So, in other words, I went out, collected some information, organized that information, based on that understanding, based on these observations, I went out to the next direction. And repeated the same thing again and again and again and again. It took me five years to build my base library, and then from my base library, uh, the rest of the uh, institutes, the TV channel, everything else developed. So that's where we are here. And is it? This is not the university of life. This is exploration. This is an expansion of the mind. This is expansion of academic understanding and academic experience. And the University of Life does not offer that. So, these are things to think about. Anyways, uh, I have to get back to my studies. I said I've got another six hours left to go. And, uh, yeah. Anyways, I will see you in the next uh, segment of the uh, Big Bang Theory L's BTS vlog. Alright, take it easy. Democratic Earth. Earth.